Welcome to City Roundup, brought to you by the City of Pensacola, with your host, Saida Rosa. City Roundup is your one-stop shop for everything having to do with the City of Pensacola. And now, Saida. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of City Roundup. I'm your host, Saida Rosa, with the City of Pensacola. It's Easter week, but we're still hard at work. On Monday, Mayor Grover Robinson spoke with reporters about Pensacola winning the Strongest Towns competition. Uh, I do want to congratulate the Center for Civic Engagement. It's my understanding their application for Strong Towns. Pensacola was awarded uh, the winner of Strong Towns, so uh, that was exciting as well. And I really appreciate the work that the uh, Center for Civic Engagement is doing. Uh, I think they're making us all better about understanding how we make a better community and, and we work together. Uh, so toward that end, that's what we will be continuing to do. If you're on social media, make sure to follow Mayor Robinson. Just search Pensacola Mayor on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We officially have a new iconic addition to downtown Pensacola. In the latest episode of our new show, host Tanya Vaden and John Scanlon travel back to the Pensacola Ferry Landing to talk to us about the grand opening. They also tell us about an exciting new partnership and give us details on an upcoming Easter egg hunt. Those topics and more coming up right now. Welcome back to another episode of our City News Show. I'm your host, John Scanlon. And I'm Tanya Vaden, and we're back at the Pensacola Ferry Landing for today's show to tell you about its grand opening. We had a great turnout for the event on Saturday, April the 13th. Port Director Amy Miller served as the day's master of ceremonies. We also had members from Council and the Escambia County Commission, National Park Service Superintendent Dan Brown and the General Manager of Pensacola Bay Cruises spoke about their excitement to the start of service. Of course, Mayor Grover Robinson was also there to talk about the great partnership between several organizations. I remember uh, sitting with Thaddeus Cohen and Buckley in the Scenic 90 Cafe and discussing what was the opportunity for us to maybe look at a ferry system that would connect the beach and to, uh, and to downtown. I think this is exciting in what is happening and what we're doing. I think we're looking at different ways of, of, of making transportation work. And again, as we look to the future and what we're going to do, we can only put so many cars on the island. And again, any way that we can find a way, as, as, uh, as Councilwoman Hill said, uh, to make downtown more easily accessible for walking and, and, and having those opportunities, we would love uh, the people from Pensacola Beach to come over here. To you can catch a ride on one of the two catamaran-style tour boats beginning April the 19th. Come buy your ticket here at 750 Commandencia Street. Silver Airways is going wahoo for the Pensacola Wahoos. The airline announced at the baseball home opener that it is now the official airline of the team. So what does that mean for fans? A chance at free airline tickets. Silver Airways will be giving away two round trip tickets at select Blue Wahoo home games. Silver Airlines just began nonstop service to Fort Lauderdale. You can learn more about flight information at silverairways.com and we'll see you at the ballpark. Well, the city of Pensacola just received a generous donation from RBI Pensacola for their t-ball program held at Fricker, Cobb, and Woodland Heights Resource Centers. RBI gave the city a monetary donation of $750 towards the purchase of uniforms and donated and loaned equipment for each of the teams. RBI stands for Reviving Baseball in Inner Cities, and the organization is a youth outreach program designed to increase participation in baseball and softball among underserved youth. The equipment we received were team bags, bats, gloves, batting tees, just to name a few. Thank you so much, RBI Pensacola, for this donation. Congratulations are in order to Captain Rick Simmons. On April 10th, Captain Simmons worked on Ladder Company 16 for the last time. The picture you're looking at is a collage his crew made him to commemorate his many years of dedicated service to the city of Pensacola and Pensacola Fire Department. Captain Simmons, we thank you for your many years of leadership and wish you well in retirement. We have a couple of upcoming events to tell you about. First, for our people ages 50 and up, you can catch a lift to Biloxi. On April 24th, we'll be loading up at the Brownsville Community Center and heading out for a day of fun at the Hard Rock Casino. The bus leaves at 8.30 in the morning and the cost is $10 per person. Participants will receive $20 in free play and half off at the buffet. If you are interested, sign up at the Brownsville Community Center. What happens in Biloxi stays in Biloxi. We also have our Easter egg hunt at the Fricker Resource Center on April the 20th. This event goes from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Egg hunt times vary by age group and admission is free. We'll also have Sunshine with Magic 106.1 hosting the event. We hope to see you there. That's all we have for you on this episode. 
We thank you for watching, and we will see you next, next week. week. Did you know Osceola Golf Course is the only municipal golf course in Escambia County? Our general manager and golf pro, Adrian Stills, gives us a tour of the course and tells us what makes his job so special in this edition of City Spotlight. Golf uh, kind of was what I wanted to do all my life. I played all the other sports growing up as a kid. When I was about 10 or 11 years old, I decided to Golf was what I wanted to do. I played on the PGA Tour in 85 and 6. So now I think I'm going into my 14th or 15th year here at Osceola Golf Course. Hi, I'm Adrian Stills. I'm the general manager of Osceola Golf Course. And what makes this golf course special? Uh, it's been here 90 years. Uh, it has some really rich history from a dairy farm to a nine hole golf course that was deemed and the land was given to the city of Pensacola by the junior JC's uh, Chamber of Commerce. And it is the only municipal golf course in Pensacola. But this is a very special property. Uh, we've renovated it. We've got a, the best teaching facility now and practice facility and possibly uh, all of Northwest Florida. It's user friendly to beginners, but it still has a lot of challenge to it. So that's what makes this place special besides its very, very rich history. Its impact um, with the community, with the junior golfers, with the organizations that do fundraising, fundraising golf tournaments and stuff like that, uh, has been a big, big factor. We're small enough, but good enough to be able to touch and really make a difference in some uh, juniors' lives. It's a very special property. Uh, it's changed tremendously over the last 15 years. It's in excellent shape, fantastic place to come out and practice. I must say, I, maybe not like most people, I don't, I don't get up every morning dread going to work. I have a pretty good workspace. We'll be right back after this. Natural gas homes are in demand. Here's what home builders have to say. The natural gas cooking as well as the fireplace and the the uh, atmosphere that you have on a really nice, well-designed lanai, you can entertain real well. It's very comfortable. People are real homey there. And uh, we we find the lanai to be a real design feature, along with having the natural gas to implement that. Natural gas from Pensacola Energy. The clean, reliable, earth-friendly choice. Cooking with natural gas is more controlled than using an electric range. But more importantly, they're less expensive to operate. Don't get burned with electric. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. We now turn to our green tip of the week. Opt out of any catalogs or subscriptions you don't read or can read electronically instead. It saves paper and therefore saves trees. You can go to www.optoutprescreen.com to also opt out of receiving unsolicited junk mail. The city is looking for great people to be a part of our team. This week's featured job is for a police cadet. This is an entry level position for those who are interested in a career in law enforcement. Apply online at PensacolaCityJobs.com. Some food for thought for your Friday, and this episode of Coastal Cooking Quick Bites host John Scanlon from Pensacola Energy shows us how to make cheese grits. This episode features Chef Brian from Kingfisher. On this episode of Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites, we have cheese grits from Kingfisher. Stick around and find out how it's done. Welcome to Coastal Cooking Quick Bites, brought to you by Pensacola Energy. Hey, welcome to Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites. I'm your host, John Scanlon, and we're joined today in the kitchen by a very special guest, uh, Chef Brian from Kingfisher. Brian, thank you for being on the show. You're welcome. So this is actually one part of a three-part Kingfisher trilogy. We're making a Kingfisher platter here. Uh, and in the other episodes, we have coleslaw and we have fried mullet. What are you making in this one? We're making cheese grits. Ah, a staple. Uh, and, and you do yours, uh, I mean, what makes yours different? Uh, we're looking at some of these ingredients and uh, we talked about it. You're going to make something special before you even put it in there. It's, yeah, is that correct? I mean, it's uh, a... Yeah. We're going to do it um, just the way I like to do it. Um, you're right, it is a staple. You know, I think one of the quintessential dishes that we serve is mullet with cheese grits mm -hmm. and maybe baked beans or maybe coleslaw, whatever you like. Um, but yeah, we try to take it, you know, 
to the Kingfisher level uh, by using some really nice uh, grits um, from C&D Mill uh, in town here. The ground, uh, you can find them at the farmer's market. And uh, also making our own cheese sauce from scratch. And you called it a roux. Uh, and I love that. I love having a roux. You love having uh, a roux? Inside, you know, in cheese grits. That's just awesome. I, I yeah. can't wait. And in addition to making a roux, uh, we'll also be uh, throw a couple more French terms out there. We'll be making a, a bechamel sauce, which is a French mother sauce. And then by adding cheese, it uh, turns into a sauce called a Mornay. I'm going to let you say all those because yeah. I can't. So it's roux, bechamel, and Mornay. So uh, they're all going to be in one sauce. It sounds like a lot, but it's actually pretty simple. Excellent. Well, I can't wait to see it. Cool. Uh, I'll show you. Um, you know, many recipes, as uh, last time we said, many recipes start with an egg yolk. This one is also starting with an onion, which is a base for a lot of really good recipes, too. Um, I have an onion peeled here, and we're just making a, a small amount today, so I'm just going to start with a quarter of a yellow onion or a Spanish onion. Give it a little dice. You make that look so effortless. All right, so. <laughs> well, just give yourself a couple 50 pound bags and you can pra <laughs> practice. Uh, so I'm gonna put that in there. So what we have there is about um, two teaspoons of just uh, vegetable oil or uh, using canola oil. You could use something else, um, but it's just something to get the, the heat moving throughout the, um, the sauce there or throughout the onions. So what we're doing is sweating the onions here the pan was already on low for a minute, so it's already starting to cook. And just like we added the salt and pepper in with the egg, you know, when you start the recipe, add a little bit of salt and pepper in with the onion there. And then uh, what I have here is some boiling water, and we're going to start our grits. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm actually using the C&D cornmeal. Mm -hmm. At the restaurant, we use their grits. And if you're going to use their grits, um, which I recommend that you do, you want to wash them off real well because it's an old-fashioned type of grit and they come with the husk on mm -hmm. them so if you wash them really 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 well then uh, you'll have a nice smooth grit at the end uh, but th the way you do that is you just put them in a pot and run the water over them and you'll see the husks come to the top okay and they'll run over the edge of the pot and then the the grit the yellow golden grit part it's like painting for gold is at the bottom there and that's what you can use but I'm using their cornmeal which is um, comes from the same corn product, but uh, we use this in our hush puppies and stuff. But essentially we're making it like a polenta here with the cornmeal, which is also kind of nice. And it's just a lot faster. Whereas the grits take five or six hours to cook at the restaurant. <laughs> this will be ready here in just a few minutes, which is good. Um, I don't want it to be too thick, but usually when you do grits, or I would say polenta, it's about a one to four ratio. So right here we have about a half a cup of, of uh, cornmeal or grits if you're using it and about two cups of water. So if you bring it to a boil first, you're going to save some time because um, it's already hot and they're going to start cooking right away. In um, today's day and age, five hours for grits is almost unheard of. Yeah, it's I mean, weird. You know, yeah. these grits take longer to cook than some of the other ones, but, but the finished product, I, I love it and the, it's a local product and the Family that owns it is really cool. I mean, that just kind of goes to the care that you have at your restaurant. Like we talked in the other episodes where, you know, you, you have homemade dressings, you have homemade hot sauces, you know, your grits are from scratch. They're, they're local. It's, uh, that's pretty nice. I mean, all around it, you, you know what you're going to get. So yeah, yeah. It's exciting. You know, I think people taste it and they notice the difference. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people say, oh, this is, tastes like, you know, I used to have back when my mom or my grandmother was cooking and to me, that's a really good compliment. You know? Absolutely. I think my kids would yell at me if it took more than two minutes to microwave some grits. So that, you know, right? I don't know how to make yeah. five-hour grits, but I love to eat them. And so, yeah. so start in the <laughs> afternoon before, and then you can have them for breakfast yeah. the next morning. Um, so our cheese sauce also has a little bit of garlic. So I just put a little chop on that. Throw that in there with the onions, and that's going to start cooking. And then what we can do now is add more butter than you normally would because this is going to be part of our roux. I think that's enough actually. So I have a quarter onion, uh, half a teaspoon or a quarter, uh, half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And then 
I have about a quarter stick of butter there, which is, um, yeah, like an eighth of a pound or something like that, but a quarter stick of butter is good. Um, I would say if you're using butter sticks, if not, I would say it's probably about a half a cup or a third of a cup, third of a cup of butter there. And that's stirring. So you don't have to measure everything so much every time you do it with these kind of recipes. You know, if you're, if you're making, if you're baking, you do, but if you're making a roux, you know. That, you that's where some of the fun to. comes in when you're cooking at your house is you're making it your own. I mean. I think so. I think so. You know, maybe you like it with a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that, you mm -hmm. know. I like to put uh, mustard powder in my uh, bechamel. Um, um, some other people like to do that too, uh, but I really, I'm all about, I'm all about it. So maybe you have to find what you like in your bechamel, you know, maybe it's extra cayenne, you know, maybe it's a little cayenne, maybe it's a little, you know, like we have our little celery seed and our coleslaw, it's just a little something to kind of make it your own. Absolutely, a little signature to it. So now that we have the butter, we want to actually add the same amount of flour that we did with the butter. So if we had about a third of a cup of butter, then we can just add a third of a cup of flour here. And that's going to be our roux. So roux, all it is is fat and uh, fat and flour. The fat here is butter. If you're making a gumbo roux, you know you cook it for a long time until it turns dark. This one we're not going to worry about doing that. We're just going to go in and add all the milk here, which is a cup of milk. And what you want to do is just really whisk it. And right. uh, you can you added that milk, you can really smell it. That's just uh, that's yeah, uh, yeah it's just stirring up all that garlic. That, that smells really good. It does, yeah. Milk smells good, and also I think the grits when they're cooking smells good too. It gives a nice sweet flavor on the grits. I don't know if you can smell. It's one of my favorite smells. Oh, absolutely, it's yes. Just, I, I didn't know what you were talking about until I smelled it. I was like, yeah, yep, that's it. <laughs> yeah. So this looks pretty watery right now. And that's okay because once it comes up to a simmer, then it's, the magic is going to happen and it's going to thicken right then when the flour cooks. Mm -hmm. gonna... And so you're just going to stir that until uh, it, it thickens a little bit and then... Yeah, I'm going to stir this until it thickens all the way and then I'm going to turn the heat all the way down and cook it a little bit more. So this isn't something you can turn on, go check out what's on TV, you need to... Yeah, this is gonna, if you walk away from this, you're gonna be scrubbing a pot later. <laughs> and it's happened to the best of us. Um, but yes, yeah, or you could turn it down. You could, if you want, if you weren't in a hurry, you could turn it down and come back every once in a while. But now, you know. I just know burning a roux is, uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's punishable <laughs> in, in, in our, my family, so. Right, and this is starting to look like sausage gravy, which essentially, if you use sausage instead of butter, it really? would be your white gravy, you know, it's that easy to make. This is really thick, which is good. So you're, you're doing cheese grits with basically a sausage gravy in it. This is <laughs> like the most southern food. I know. I cannot, this is gonna be awesome. Yeah. So if we're gonna hold back on the sausage for now, <laughs> it will be vegetarian. But it's just, you know, if you wanted to go there, you could. Mm -hmm. uh, mustard powder, that's about a, uh, just about a quarter teaspoon. It doesn't need a lot. Just because I really like it doesn't mean you need to put a lot in there. This is our house seasoning. Black, it's not really a secret. Uh, black, white, red pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, um, paprika, chili powder. Mm. It's like a Cajun seasoning. We like to make it in house because we can use it as a, in all these recipes, but we can also use it as a blackening spice mm. without worrying about it getting so salty. Mm -hmm. Like, so, cause some of the pre-made blackening spices are a little too salty for that. Absolutely. In my opinion. Uh, I'm just going to use the back of the spoon here to measure out, um, about a half a teaspoon of our house seasoning, or, you know, if you wanted to use your favorite Cajun seasoning there, you could just reduce this, if it has salt in it, just reduce the salt a little bit there. And um, you can easily adjust for the recipe. Just when you use the things like Old Bay and Cajun seasonings, just check the label. Mm -hmm. And if the first ingredient is salt, then make sure that you reduce the amount of salt that you add other places in the recipe. Would be my recommendation. Um, so now that this is bechamel is really thick, this is the sauce called bechamel. And this is actually too thick for most applications, really. But 
for what we're using it here. I think it's great. Um, now we can add our cheese. And when I add the cheese, it's going to turn from bechamel to the Mornay. That a lot of cooks like to use that terminology because <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, and so now that's now it's the cheese sauce, and um, that's looking pretty good. And we can actually take that right off the heat. Oh wow, so that's that's your cheese sauce. That's our cheese sauce. And actually, I'm going to add a little. Your favorite hot sauce in there is good. The hot sauce is good because it actually is acts more like a vinegar than it does mm -hmm. to make it spicy. It's just like in anything. But this sauce really likes because it's so rich. You need to have a little bit of something in there to kind of lighten it up. And then the other thing you can use is a little nutmeg. Nutmeg is classic with the bechamel. So anytime mm -hmm. you have a bechamel, if you want to use nutmeg, don't be shy. I would have never thought of putting the two together. It's... <laughs> yeah, this press smells pretty good too. It does. Now, I want to say our kind of cornmeal polenta is good. It's looking thick. If I tasted it right now, I think it would taste smooth. And it would taste really under seasoned because there's no salt in there. Mm -hmm. And I like to add the salt right at the end here. Mm -hmm. So when you're cooking grits and stuff, um, I don't know why, but if you add grits, the salt at the beginning, it's going to make it take it longer to cook, I think. Really? That's the word on the street. Um, so you can add the salt right towards the end. I think it's true. I've tried it a few times. And I think it's true. Some of this kitchen myths I don't necessarily buy into, but this one I'm going with. And then, um, so now that this is nice and thick, which is good because our, you know, our polenta here, or our grits, are still a little not quite as thick as we want them to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy that our cheese sauce is nice and thick. So it won't, so it'll help to kind of thicken it up. And I think in this case there is a such thing as too much cheese. As weird as that sounds. And the guy who's, who does the C&D mill kind of pointed it out to me. He said he, he said he doesn't like too much cheese in his grits. Because mm -hmm. he likes to be able to taste the actual Absolutely. Grits. It's uh, I was going to say cheese. Uh, cheese does come first, but <laughs> in cheese grits. But you know, too much of, uh, of a good thing is not necessarily a good thing. Right. All right, so our grits are boiling. One thing I can do here, since we're using polenta, is cheat a little bit. And this stuff cooks so fast, you can actually just thicken it up just like that. Doing, using the, doing that with grits wouldn't. Uh, but I guess if you had some grits that were too loose, you potentially could add some cornmeal to it to thicken it up in a pinch. And so this, we're getting close to being finished, is that correct? Or is that uh, a... I'd say it's done. Oh, wow. I'd say it's done. So just a few minutes, I mean, we're talking maybe 10 minutes at home, you can make this. Um, mm. But uh, if you want a five hour cheese grits, you're gonna go to Kingfisher. Uh, and they're at 1500 Barrancas Avenue. It's the old Slips building. Uh, they've remodeled and it looks fantastic inside. Chef Brian and his wife Amanda have done a great job. Uh, they're open on Mondays through Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and on Fridays and Saturdays from 10 to 10 all day long. Uh, make sure to follow them online. Uh, they have social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, Kingfisher. Uh, you have special items on the menu all the time. Uh, special events, live music, you, you have extended hours. Uh, it's really an interactive place to, to follow it. It's something always interesting. Uh, and you can also find them online at kingfishersandwiches.com. Uh, again, this is one part of a trilogy. So uh, that's cheese grits from Kingfisher. Uh, make sure to watch the other episodes. Uh, Chef Ryan, thank you for being on the show. You're welcome. Uh, and make sure you stick around and watch the other episodes of Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites. This has been Coastal Cooking Quick Bites, brought to you by Pensacola Energy. A quick reminder before we go, the next Mayor's Neighborhood Cleanup Day is Saturday, April 27th. The southern boundary for this month's pickup area is Cervantes Street from Pace Boulevard over to North Davis Highway. The eastern boundary is North Davis Highway from Cervantes Street up to Leonard Street, and the western boundary follows the city limits all the way down to Cervantes Street. That's all we have for this episode of City Roundup. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you, same place, same time, next week.